Good morning. I'm just coming right at you straight up on Monday morning, the 19th of July. Doing a check-in and whatever else might arise to the surface. <clears throat> really appreciate you folks very much. I do. I do. I want to share with you that this is the first morning that I woke up w w and didn't cry. And that's a good thing because tomorrow is the day that I have to go and um, settle my brother's apartment and gather his belongings. And I know that's not going to be an easy day. So I'm glad that I listened to the landlord and a couple other folks in my life who told me, don't rush this, give yourself a little bit of time to take care of things. Uh, the other thing that I'll share is that today, hopefully, I'll be able to settle the details of my brother's memorial. We ha you know, we're not going to have a funeral, but where we have his ashes on display and a do, a, do some kind of display and music and have people remember him. <clears throat> I hope to be able to um, uh, have the date where... I, when I can do that today and start putting that together. Something else I have to share with you, which is just so sad, but indicative of these insane, politically charged, in a ne very negative way, times that we live in. I'm blocked from my Facebook post for three days because they misinterpreted or their algorithms decided that some words I used to brag about my show Saturday night were sexist and hate speech. <laughs> I've contested it to the highest level that you can, you know, the, the board. The post said, because we had a blazing set, you see it. You see what I can do at 66 years old? Get the hell out of my way, okay? I have, it said, and nobody can fuck with my band. We, RAF, we burn it down. Because we do, you saw that. So, um, also some of you saw some of the garbage that I deal with. Even now, at this time of losing a loved one, y'all saw some of that. It's, the, it's, you know, it's beyond, okay, here's what you want need to understand. When this first started happening, because of the falseness of it, it, it was very hurtful. And then the fact that it kept going on and wouldn't stop, that was hurtful. But as time got on, it became obvious what, what I was dealing with. Either some kind of bots, you know, or just some real, really bad, ignorant, stupid people. And it's the, the, the mess that I, some of you, I, I know some of you saw them before I deleted them. The few that I got yesterday, it was like, oh, there they are. There, these people are really, lo really lost. Okay, so I just feel even stronger to know clearly what we're dealing with in this world. You know, um, and I'll say this to whoever needs it. It's a shame to whatever age you are that you're not aware of the trickery of the two-party system. That is hopelessly lost and if you're actually in there bickering up from one side to the other, man, you're such a part of the problem. So dumb you come over here and try to assign it to me and I've said it clear. I see that bullshit. Politics is hopeless and it's part of the destruction of, of the uh, quality of life worldwide. So that's what's happening with me, and um, I can relate <clears throat> music to it in that this is happening. So my family, I really do love my family, and I feel like as a unit, my siblings were kind of, we stand out in my community here in Omaha. We're not typical at all, generally speaking. We're not. And... Um, so my brother's close friends, and there's just a few of them, I've been allowing, uh, not allowing, but yeah, I've been kind of folding in his very best friend, Pat, and you're watching, 
Pat Bullock, I'm saying your name. Um, we spent a good part of the morning together. He came over yesterday. Bless you for coming over because Pat's got bad knees, you know, so even just getting up and getting down is painful for him. I love you, Pat, like family. And yesterday was wonderful to talk to you, share with you, and hear have you share with me not only um, little little things about you and Patrick, but more so you. And um, I'm going to say it here to the world that this man, Patrick Bullock, if you meet him, you'll see, you'll think he's just a common person, like an old farmer or something. He kind of comes across like an old grizzly white dude who's... Um, worked hard and he has but I wanted to, again I hope you don't mind me sharing this with world Patrick but as we talked yesterday you let me see your inner dignity it started to shine through all that crusty bullshit that the world has put on you that it puts on people see I'm glad I'm, I can see that that's the message that I'll keep giving over and over especially since it's real clear to me that people attempt who attempt to hurt others because of bullshit in their minds these people are, are really, really sick and really immature and need to be shut down, need to be let, let, let it known. The world is so full of stupidity that the, the idiotness will never be shut down, but it, I'm calling it out, okay? And at the same time saying that Pat, Pat is a good man. We had a good visit. There was some music involved. The music sitting out that I said what do you want to hear Pat and he has to hear some Jeff Lorber and I can grab the one we listened to because I put it away yes he wanted to hear some Jeff Lorber and um, Jeff Lorber fusion pianist um, you see Chick Corea Joe Farrell on here so it's that it's um jazz rock kind of fusiony good stuff it was funny because again pat found out that i was the turn i was the guy that turned my brothers onto this stuff see my brothers are big mouths and braggarts you know i'll talk about patrick in the present tense his spirit is still here and i'm telling the truth that's where we're different i'm proud like them but they're boastful and i try to i am too but i try to keep it down you know what i'm saying so there's a lot that i do and have done it. I'm not bragging about it, but I've just done it. So I'm the one that turned my brothers and a whole lot of people onto this music. I'm the one that turned my brothers on the Mahavishnu Orchestra. Um, so I could go on. I can't, you know. And but then they spread the word. I mean, like wildfire fire here in Omaha and to all their friends. So we listened to this all the way through yesterday, drinking coffee, um, having a good morning and then after that I asked I said what else you want to hear I said we were, you, I noticed you we were talking earlier that you are a Pink Floyd fan <clears throat> what's some of your favorite Pink Floyd and he said what I'd like to hear was one of these days I said sure now I thought to myself that's curious because I thought well, not thought, but they pay, play Pink Floyd to death on the radio here in the Midwest, except they only play certain songs. iHeartRadio Playlist, which to me is um, a disservice to humanity to manipulate um, the radio to the point that we're stuck in a time warp, um, almost like in the movie Back to the Future. I think it's a real disservice to mankind, and it's part of the warped sensibility that we have where people really believe what's on the TV instead of thinking for themselves. So I said, sure, I'd be happy to play one of these days for you by Pink Floyd. Had fun with it because here's my US copy. You know, we talked about how we both have tripped our balls off in the past to this album and many, many Pink Floyd albums. <clears throat> And then I showed him the uh, the reissue that they put out with the textured cover where you can see the difference in the cover, <clears throat> how it looked in the U UK and other parts of the country, of the world as opposed to the US. And we listened to all of side, we listened to the whole album. 
by the time Echoes was coming on, Pat had to go. But this was a pleasant, pleasant visit on many levels, and the music, being able to share this, it's just really the best. And that also was, during the conversation, so many things came up, but I was able to share. Well, see, Pat, this is the, this is the point of this record collection, this library that I have. It's not to boast that I have a lot of records. No, not at all. It's about having access to the music and the actual artifacts when times like this come up, as well as for my own pleasure. But it's wonderful to share time with people and some music will come up and I can just come in here and grab it and play it. That's what's fun about having this record collection. Okay? Now the other thing I want to share with you is I'm going to upload probably today, probably I'm not going to wait any longer, I'm going to go ahead and upload the video for the first single and the opening the lead track off my album Future Still which is Ramped uh, pro produced and directed by Aaron Gum everyone who's seen the video loves it and I, I've seen it many many times and I love it I'm so glad my brother got to see it several times before he passed that we made the video in the winter that's how timelines go when you get you do a record deal. All of a sudden, you can't just do it now. Everything goes on a timeline. <clears throat> so we shot the video, actual footage, in when it was still cold earlier this year. But Aaron didn't have, get a chance to completely finish it until and deliver it to the red, record, record label until June. <clears throat> so Pat was able to see it. And it blew his mind, which of course I knew it would. So now I want to share it with you. You know, um, I think I can share this without. Um, I think I can share it now if I didn't before. It feels like the timing of when I definitive found out about my brother's passing. It, in retrospect, it feels like in a way it was a gift from my brother and the universe for me to not find out until after I could enjoy the world premiere of my video on Tuesday night. It's not uncommon for me to not speak to my brother Patrick for four or five days. You know, usually within five days we call. Um, I'd seen him sat either Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. It's fuzzy now. It's weird. I was talking to Pat. We're both having this um, this combobulation about when did we last talk to Pat. It's weird now. But what I'm saying is, apparently Pat was gone for sure already Monday. Might have been Sunday he had passed in his sleep. But the coroner said Monday. That, that's what they said to me. The video premiere was Tuesday night. Now, I... I think I said this, but I'm going to share it again. Um, I got these little jabbing thoughts about my brother, get a hold of my brother Pat, starting on Sunday, but not strong. And I think a big part of what was going on was me riding this personal high of expectation about the upcoming, uh, not only the video dropping on Tuesday, but I also knew that the label had FedExed me my albums and I was expecting them by I found out I think Monday that I'd get them by Wednesday so I was in a state of personal excitement and, and elation and it feels in retrospect like the universe and my brother was sparing me the hidden his news so that I could enjoy the world premiere of my video which not a lot of people watched it when it sh showed but the event the way it went down a first for me was wonderful and so I want to thank my brother's spirit whether or not it's really the case but I'm that's how it feels it's like he, he I was allowed 
that grace period before I had to deal with the you know the the uh, gra the, the reality. What more can I say before I sign off? Just that for everyone else who is grieving, and yes, grieving is lifelong in many ways. It is just that both of my parents have been gone since the uh, 80s. My dad first um, by suicide and my mom next because of poor health. But are they in my mind and in my thoughts, in my life? every single day ever since yes they have blended into the backdrop of my mindscape in a way that I've folded them into me that's the best way I can explain it specifically my parents I've lost many other people friends my first actual girlfriend and I knew this was going to happen to her. I won't say her name, but she drank herself to death. Those passings are in me, my my life. But like some people I know, some people carry death like a like a uh, backpack, and it weighs them down. It's almost like they think they have to remember them. And I'm not like that. I'm not sentimental like that. I'm not sentimental about about the body either getting my brother's ashes that's not Patrick that's his carcass Patrick if Patrick is anywhere he's all he's everywhere okay maybe even in the coffee I drink so carry on be as strong as you can and be kind to yourself and um, I, I encourage either even beyond bereavement I encourage people to find ways to think about themselves more realistically and more lovingly that was a big part of what we had talked about yesterday isn't it Pat I'm just revealing all your shit here I'm not going to tell them the size of your pants or nothing <laughs> <coughs> excuse me but it's important we were talking about inner peace and confidence which Pat recognizes I do have but he kept not quite understanding the message I was saying, where it comes from. I was explaining that we're, we're born with the divine spark and we unlearn it as soon as humans start teaching us their bullshit. That's where my sense of self-love and confidence really lies. Not in what I have or what I do or what people tell me about me, which, you know, is apparently hard for the average person I'll say it like that to understand yeah Pat was kept coming to grips trying to come to understand what I was saying it's because of your talent because of where you've been no no it's not see that's a to me that's a reflection of the material value-based system that we've grown we, we live in and have grown up in it's the things that you acquire um, outside of yourself that make you no that's reverse wisdom that is not wise we inherently by existing have worth but the wor world won't tell you that you got to find it out for yourself and then move your life in directions and around people that will support that reality so Pat, you're the closest thing to my little brother that I got as far as a human, other than my siblings, because they're all out of town. So as I'm going to say it again publicly here, I told Pat, he can call me anytime. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not a caller. And, I, and I'm not, the, I don't make commitments. I'll call you every day. I'll make sure I write. No, I ain't like that. I, I don't, I'm not going to be like that now. My brother was like that. Very codependent. Fuck that shit, okay? That is unhealthy. But, Pat, because I know you're watching, you can call. Okay? You won't abuse it. People who are codependent and don't understand that their neediness abuse others, thinking that they're getting love and receiving love. That's bullshit. 
Okay, some of the other people, some of you people know it watching this. Did you know that? Are you dealing with it? Are you doing it? Check yourself. Check yourself. Why is it okay for you to be a burden on others? And I'm putting it like that. I need, I need, well, yeah, well, shit, find out a way to fill the need your goddamn self and lighten up on other people a little bit. Okay. It's 20 minutes. It's a good time for me to shut the hell up. <laughs> mm. I love hearing from you people. And when you see that dumb shit from these knotheads before I delete it, Notice just how absolutely brainless it is. That's why I'm saying now, well, shit, it's probably some asshole who set up these bots to try to bug people. Still, from a racist political standpoint, that is really ignorant. That is really destructive. Mm, man, what a shitty world. You know what I'm saying? Be the light. Be, be you. Spread your light. Help out. Help out. Oh my goodness, the flooding in Europe? One last thing I knew. I said this to somebody in my life last on, last year. Boy, the summer, you thought 2020 summer was a bitch? 2021. And the main thing I was thinking of was the heat. And sure enough, the heat, but shit, the flooding already. The climate change. That the greedy bastard politicians and world leaders who have been in denial of because of power and money here it is and because you greedy bastards were so focused on the here and now let me get my ducats and money now whole scale misery now and money isn't going to help it we'll be rebuilding but people's lives are destroyed and many people my age and older their lives are gone trashed And I still with, deal with people who are too stupid to see that about, the, about this world, okay? Y'all see that mess? Be light bearers, please. Please. <laughs>